On July 30th, the Chicago Museum of Natural History revealed a life-size recreation of Tyrannosaurus rex specimen FMNHPR208, also known as Sue, which showcases paleontology's most accurate depiction of our most complete T-Rex. It has muscle and flesh, and she's even holding an unlucky hadrosaur in her mouth. They nicknamed the recreation of the beast Fleshy. What do you notice first when you look at the animal? Uh, she's gorgeous. Look at those eyes. I would stop at nothing to pet this thing. But uh, what else? Well, for one, she's pretty chonky, but that never hurt no one. This recreation is representative of the incredible amount of muscle and flesh that this animal would need to move and function. Say goodbye to the shrink wrap dinosaurs of the past. Mm, what's next? Notice the scutes on her brows, on top of her snout and above the corner of her mouth. These structures likely serve to protect the animal against abrasions or potentially display sexual dimorphism, the differences between male and female animals. Either way, reptiles are absolutely covered in them. This adaptation is present in crocodiles and may have been present in dinosaurs too, starting with their early ancestors, the archosaurs. Okay, cool. Now look at her mouth and notice how the teeth are covered by, wait for it, lips. I think it's time to retire the classic Jurassic Park teeth sticking out look. It doesn't make any sense. Crocodiles' teeth are hydrated by a water environment, while dinosaurs do not have such luxury. Except for our spiny friend, of course. Lips help protect a dinosaur's most valuable tool and weapon, and it's kind of silly to think about them just hanging out to be subject to the elements. Whoa, JP, what's that on her leg? An abnormally large growth of bone was found on Sue's left fibula, indicating that she had sustained a serious infection due to some sort of injury, which is reflected on fleshy. What could have done it? An angry triceratops, or ankylosaurus, or maybe she banged her ankle on the corner. A razor scooter, that's my guess. It was also discovered that her right triceps may have been ripped from the bone. Ouch. Okay, time to look at her eyes again. For one, they look like real animal eyes. I've always appreciated how Jurassic Park did the eyes. They show intelligence, decision, wisdom, and, most important, believability. They got Velociraptor eyes right in Jurassic Park 3, but I resent them for the hideous Hollywood-inspired slit eyes they've done in Jurassic World. Anyways, back on topic. T-Rex eyes faced forward, a huge difference from primitive dinosaurs like Allosaurus, whose eyes pointed away from each side of its head like a lizard. Because Tyrannosaurus's eyes faced forward, scientists concluded that the animal had binocular vision, or the ability to focus both eyes on one target like us. This meant T-Rex had depth perception due to overlapping fields of view, and could likely spot things up to 6 kilometers away. Keep in mind, we can only spot things about 1.6 kilometers away. We kinda suck. This is a huge deviation from Jurassic Park's don't move or you're dead theory. The thing can see your every move. Now let's get to the part I'm sure everyone has noticed by now. Fleshy's skin. What? No feathers? Well, I can start by saying that, duh, some dinosaurs were confirmed to have feathers, and maybe most dinosaurs did. The only thing we've confirmed with Tyrannosaurus is that it definitely had scaly skin in some areas of its body. Recent studies on Tyrannosaur integument, the tough outer layer of skin, indicates that Tyrannosaurus did, in fact, have scaly skin, with scales possibly intensifying in areas like the face. Take a look at these fossilized T-Rex skin impressions. A skin impression isn't the skin itself, but rather a mold of earth pressed down like Play-Doh by the dead dinosaur that became rock over time. Why did we ever think T-Rex had feathers? Perhaps it was a hasty conclusion we made when we found other dinosaurs that had feathers and we were all like, ooh, all dinosaurs had feathers. But among the science community, paleontologists examined basal tyrannosaurs, early ancestors that T-Rex likely evolved from, like Dilong, and determined that since Dilong had feathers, T-Rex did too. Well, it was recently discovered that Dilong and T-Rex went in two different directions on the tyrannosaur family tree, and that giant tyrannosaurs, Tyrannosauridae, proceeded without feathers. Maybe T-Rex babies were born with feathers and gradually lost them as they grew up. Maybe adult tyrannosaurs only had feathers in isolated places. We're not quite sure yet. Oh, and the skin was probably earthy colored like on fleshy, so the animal could conceal itself during hunts. But we'll just have to guess about that one. So, I hope you learned something today. I know it's hard to have your image of a dinosaur, or anything for that matter, challenged, but I think it's exciting. Science is always keeping us on our toes. Never become sentimental with a predisposed belief in science. After all, science is the advancement of our knowledge, and becoming too comfortable with the way things are now stops that advancement. So for now, enjoy what you see, and look forward to more amazing discoveries. Thank you.